Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Amanda. I am a hand embroidery artist and I run this YouTube channel as well as a blog focused around teaching other people how to embroider. In this video, I wanted to share some quick tips that I have for embroidering pet portraits. Pet portraits are something I've been doing for probably around 10 years now. I used to do them a lot. I did a ton of commission work for a while and I still do them from time to time, but now I mainly focus on teaching others how to do them. If you're interested in learning more about thread painting, specifically geared mostly towards pet portraiture, I do have a bunch of exclusive tutorials on my Patreon. I'll leave a link below if you want to check that out, but otherwise let's get into some of the tips. All of my pet portraits use a technique called thread painting, which is where you use the long and short stitch among a few other basic embroidery stitches to basically blend colors together similar to how you would with painting. This technique allows you to add in a lot of fine detail, shadows, highlights, and it makes it to where you can make something look way more realistic. The first thing I wanted to go over was a few tips of products that I like to use. And these are all things that I use for pretty much every portrait. The first product that I really like to use is DMC Cotton Stranded Embroidery Floss. This is probably one of the most popular embroidery threads out there and it's for a good reason. They have over 500 different colors and obviously for making a pet portrait, you need a ton of different colors. I probably easily use 40 or 50 colors for each portrait. So it has a wide selection of colors that you can use. It's also high quality, it's color fast and light fast, and so these portraits should stand the test of time. The other thing I really like to have on hand is a DMC stranded color card. This is the kind that actually has the floss on it, and it makes it way easier to select colors that you need. You can just see them all at once and you don't have to like sift through all of your thread to figure out a color you want. The other product that I use religiously is Solvi Water Soluble Stabilizer. This is a translucent stabilizer that makes it really easy to add really fine detail into your design. It's way nicer to, than to trace through the fabric. I just feel like I lose a lot of detail when I'm trying to see what I have drawn. So I really like to use this product. I also use an iPad Pro with the app Procreate to reference and design all of my embroideries. This is not a requirement. You can easily use tracing paper over your reference photo, but I think it just has a lot of good features and it's very convenient to have. When I make an embroidery design, I like to mark out any sort of distinct features in the pet as well as any fur patterns or color changes that I can kind of observe in the pet. And I like to work off of one reference photo in order to make the design. Sometimes I will have a handful of reference photos just to see like the different colors and to make sure I'm getting everything accurate. But I do like to focus on only using one reference photo. And I import it into Procreate and I'm able to kind of mark out where I want to add in different color changes and all of the features of the pet. When I first started embroidering pet portraits, I would use a lot of strands at once. I would use like three or four. And while this can cover the area faster and you can get it done faster, it doesn't really allow you to add in a lot of fine detail. So now I only use one strand throughout the entire pet portrait. It does take a lot of time, but I do think it makes it easier to blend colors together and to add in a lot of fine detail. I like to start with a color palette that I see in the photo. I choose the most accurate colors that I can see and I try to start simple rather than having like 50 colors because I kind of like to build off of the color palette and test things out as I go. So it is kind of a trial and error process, but I do think that that method works at least for me personally. Another thing I like to start with is the eyes. I think that these are one of the most defining characteristics and it can really show the personality of the pet. So I do like to start with those first. And it also is just an easy starting place to where you can kind of work from inside out from there. Another tip that I find really helpful is to observe the fur pattern and work off of a really good reference photo. 
things that are a little bit blurry or the lighting is kind of weird, it's gonna be really hard to get your portrait right. So picking a photo that is clear and well lit is so important and it also allows you to see the direction the fur is lying as well as different unique fur patterns in the pet. Finally, I really just try to take my time and I know that sounds really cheesy, but I have tried to rush through things before when I get impatient and it never turns out the way you want it to. And I think that when you really sit there and try to really thoroughly observe the photograph that you're looking at, trying to replicate, it can really help to kind of make you aware of things that you may not have seen when you just kind of glanced at the photo and just kind of guessed. So just kind of slowing down and taking your time will really help. Finally, the last thing I wanted to share is to try not to beat yourself up about it or be too hard or impatient with yourself about it. It's taken me years and years to get to a point where I felt like I was able to accurately portray a pet. And I still feel like there's always going to be room for improvement and things that I want to perfect. So just take your time and celebrate the small wins. The more time and effort you put into it and the more practice you put into it, the more results you're going to see. So just keep trying. I hope you all found these tips helpful and applicable. If you're interested in learning more about some of the tutorials I have on my Patreon, I'll leave the link in my description here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.